Hey everybody, welcome to Landover, Maryland. He's Chris Halleck. I'm Dan Kovacevic. We're from DK Pittsburgh Sports, and the Steelers won this game. <laughs> they, they did win this game. <laughs> let, me, let me check. <laughs> Here, keep them entertained while I try to find the score. I almost got the final score right. I predicted 29-27 because I had to be, you know, out there. But 28 to 27 they was won. what it actually was. Yeah. And uh, Chris and I both just came up from what could safely be described as a joyful locker room. I mean, not playoff level or yeah. anything. Oh, right, yeah. But these guys understood that they faced much adversity, some of it of their own making, obviously. Mm -hmm. But then the, each time, Chris, they yeah. needed a player, they needed a result, they got it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they, they needed to... They did shoot themselves in the foot quite a bit. Yep. You know, I understand, like, a lot of people didn't like the fake punt early in, early in the game. I thought it was the right call. I mean, James Beard completely uncovered. It's the right call. He's but catch it the did, ball and it's you got to catch the ball. Yeah, but, there's I nothing mean, there. They, they, uh, th there were other, I mean, Joey Porter Jr., probably his worst game as a pro. A lot of back-breaking penalties, especially on that 95-yard drive that, that the Commanders had near the end of the game. They allowed the Commanders to double dip. They went down the field, scored a touchdown, got the ball in the second half, went down and scored a touchdown again. That's 14 points right there. Uh, but when it came down to it, they got the Commanders to make a really critical mistake on that neutral zone infraction to clinch the game. And I think they knew it, too. <laughs> by, yeah. by the way, a funny little story from downstairs about that, that play right there, the neutral zone infraction. The Steelers, most of them, yeah. confessed that that's all they were doing. Oh. That they weren't going to go for it. Right. Najee Harris, I don't know if he was just trying to mess with everybody or whatever, said, oh, no, no, we were going for it. We were going for it. I think he was just trying to mess with the reporters who were at hand there. Yeah. Look, everybody was having fun. Oh, yeah. uh, everybody was having fun afterward anyway. But think of, Mr. Negative, all of the, <laughs> all of the, the stuff that they did the little, the little detail stuff, uh, beginning with, let's just do this for fun since it right. happened in our end, mm -hmm. the pass to Mike Williams. Uh, Russell Wilson put this thing up in the air, and uh, maybe because he made so many other passes like this in the game, but it, they were to Calvin Austin or Van Jefferson, and there was just no connection. Maybe because of that, I thought, okay, there's no way this is going to hook up. And then I thought, wait a second, that's Mike Williams. Mike Williams plays for Pittsburgh now. Yeah. Uh, so, really, really funny story about that. Mike Williams talked to reporters after the game, obviously. He did not run that route in practice one time. Oh, boy. This is the first time I'm hearing this, not, too. I not was not one in time. on Williams. Not, not one okay. time. Now, he was like, that particular play or whatever it is, he said, yeah, yeah. obviously, that was Calvin running that. But Calvin had, had gotten injured or whatever. He, he just got a little banged up. And so Mike is out there, and you know, my, I expect them to ease him into the offense. They just acquired him. They're not going to throw the entire playbook at him in less than a week. But he didn't run the route one time in practice, and he goes out there and does that. He had one guy to beat. There, there's, a single, there's a single coverage on him out there. The safety never came across. Mm -hmm. So it's a – how much would he have had to practice that? <laughs> hey, Mike. Go long. But sometimes that's all it takes, especially when sometimes. you're watching Van Jefferson and Calvin Austin not be able to get their They couldn't even right. locate the ball. They couldn't even locate the ball on those plays. And I, I was just talking to Russ downstairs, Russell Wilson, and asked him about that play, and he just said it, it. he gave, you know how he is, he gave all of the credit to literally everybody else. Yeah. But he, he, he acknowledged that it was a really good feeling seeing that that's Mike Williams down there no absolutely no slight on anyone else he's just saying that's mike williams down there and did he feel good about that ball coming down and landing where it should yes the answer to that is yes and it's really good to have another receiver that he can do that with because just wait because george pickens he can just pretty much put it pretty much wherever he wants and george is going to catch it we even had a comment that he made a catch down, george made a catch down the sideline we weren't even worried. Like we were worried about the flag that was back there. We weren't even worried about. Oh, did George catch it? No. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. He caught right. it. He caught it. Yeah. Yeah, we're taking it for granted it to an it. extent. George is doing some special things, and he's doing them in large part because making sure that we're giving credit back to the quarterback. He, because Russ is just saying, "Here, just, just, just go." Okay, here I'm just gonna. It's gonna go up in your in your zip code, okay? And you come down with it, all right? And then come back to the huddle. We're right here when you're done. That's 
that's not expected. I, I didn't yeah. see that coming from this season, either from George or really from anybody, and, and it's made the offense kind of almost splashy. Yes. Uh, when you have a guy who can throw the deep ball like Russ can, it provides that splash, especially when you have George Pickens who can make pretty much any catch that anybody else in the league can make. Now you add a second guy who can make contested catches, who can make catches like we saw Mike Williams make. That adds the – I mean, defenses have to respect – the, the Steelers' ability to stretch the field now. Now, the Steelers need to do a better job running the ball. Yeah, they yeah, did yeah. not run no, the ball that, well. And No, my turn to be a little negative here. One is what Chris is saying about running the ball and, and, and the, the type of the freaking pitches. Oh, all, no. All day. All day. Their weakest, no. their weakest spot. Even when you could not afford pitches just from a ball security standpoint late in the game on those final drives you're still pitching the ball come on yeah now arthur smith i thought had an even bigger issue than that and it's been a recurring one and that's that he's not throwing to his best players now we can put some of that on russ because russ does have his ability to survey the field and pick who he wants to and if he sees michael pruitt he's going to throw to michael pruitt i guess okay but that's going to have to that's going to have to stop yeah. when they get into these divisional games there's going to have to be more Pat Fryermuth, uh, more Mike Williams, and yes, a lot more George Pickens. Yeah, you have to be able to. I mean, I think I even made a joke. I was like, you know what, this offense needs it needs more Mike Cole Pruitt. Like it's just it, it was it was a. Anytime you, I, I saw the Steelers go out in eleven personnel, which is you know three wide receivers on the field, one tight end. The one tight end was Pruitt. I'm like, what are we doing? Here? Uh, that's the one. I don't know. Can I, 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 can I be positive for a second, though? I guess that was Commanders had the third rush or the third ranked rush offense in the league, and the Steelers defense. For all the complaining people want to do about it today, they held them to sixty yards. Now the I'm going to turn this one around here. We're going to get to the other side of the football. When you're talking about the defense in this game, in my conversations with these guys downstairs, Chris, one subject came up more than any other, and that was, did you see him run? Did you see him run? Meaning Jaden Daniels. And the answer to that question is no. no. Why didn't you see him run? Because they went at him. They were containing him. They did the Lamar Jackson thing that we were talking about all week long on, on, on our shows. Mm -hmm. And then when it came time to... You know, that where the, the, the commanders really needed to do something else, he didn't want to do it. No. He and didn't want to do it. He was done. By the second quarter, he was done. Yeah. And, he, and here's the other thing Jaden tried to run late, and Keanu Benton didn't let him. He had a crease, and Keanu barely got a piece of him he and got, and got yeah. him down. And Cam made sure, Cam Hayward made sure to give him credit for that. Yeah, it was a big play. It I asked Keanu play. about it, and he said that he said that he. He saw why everybody was excited about the play and congratulating him. He said, but at the same time, he goes, I, he goes, in all honesty, he said, I had his hips. And then I, I went down and, and got the feet. He wasn't getting anywhere, was basically what he was <laughs> saying. It probably looked scarier than it was in his head, which is to his credit. The defense overall, though, Chris, yeah. I mean, you cannot give up a 95-yard drive. You cannot have drives extended by Joey Porter Jr. penalties. Uh, Joey, we all knew this from his time at Penn State. He's handsy. He's going to commit penalties, but they can't. You know, he's. It was it a face mask that wiped out the big sack. Yeah, face mask, and there was a defensive holding. It was going to get wiped out either way. But you'd rather get wiped out by a five-yard penalty and automatic first down than a fifteen-yard penalty and automatic first down. That's so just, it's a backbreaker. The defense needed to be a lot better than they were, while also understanding and respecting here that, that these Washington guys have put up a lot of points on a lot of teams, and Terry McLaurin does what he did oh, to yeah. a lot of teams. I have good news. Before we go today, uh, Alex Highsmith's ankle, I saw it with no tape, no nothing, and he was walking on it, which means if it had been broken, obviously. He'd be in a boot or something, yeah. You know. He'd be in something that would be 100% immobilized. So yeah. I took that. It was, <laughs> it was a lot bigger than it usually is, okay? <laughs> but I did not get the sense from anybody that it was something serious. Dante Jackson told me that his hamstring... Uh, he he said, let's see how the week goes. I'm expecting to have a light week of practice. I think whether he was joking or not, but we'll see how that materializes. And really, before we go, special teams. They gaveth and they tooketh away. <laughs> or it was the other way around, actually. Yeah. They tooketh away first. Yeah. No, that, that was a huge play. I mean, it, it's funny because uh, Zacchaeus, the receiver for 
uh, the commanders muffed one earlier in the game. What a day that dude had. Yeah, he had huh? a bad day. I mean, wow. we talk about some of the Steelers having bad that's days. That's a career ender. That's a that's a bad day because he muffed one and was like you know fortunate oh, to recover it. And then he muffed yeah. the second one. And, and then he dropped a pass in the red zone as a wide receiver. This dude was terrible. Yeah, but that, still, that's a huge play, especially whenever. The, the fake punt wasn't executed earlier in the game, and they gave up the touchdown because the commanders were already in the red zone off of that. They're finding a way to kind of even that and and, and get at least back to level playing field. So that fake punt uh, failure didn't actually end up hurting them at the end. That that's a huge thing. Yeah, and for them to go down and, and and make the play that they needed to make to get that to get the football back there. That's that's. No matter whose fault it is, that's that's who they are. Yeah. The special teams group. They they left here with their chins just as high as when they walked in, and you know what? So did the whole team, and maybe a little bit higher. Chris, seven and two, seven and two, they're seven and two, uh, atop the division, all alone. Uh, they're still where they are in the AFC, which is what four and one now. Uh, I know this wasn't think, an AFC yeah. game. I no. think they were four. Yeah, four they were four and one. And one yeah. They played the Giants and these guys, so they're still four and one. Yep. It's a Guys, you know, don't don't waste all your energy <laughs> fussing. Okay, they're seven and two. They're seven and two. They're in first place. The Ravens are coming up now. The division slate will start. Uh, obviously, it's it's a huge game, but it's also not the. I think that even if they would have lost this game, wouldn't be wouldn't have been the end of the world either. But the fact that they're able to get that win when it, not everything was going their way. That shows a lot of this team. I, I really do. Yeah. Th- I'm not ready to try to say this is a Super Bowl contender or anything like you that. Don't have but, to. but they're finding ways to win games, whether it be at home or on the road or when things are going their way or not going their way. They're winning football games. Hard to complain about. That. Yeah, I'll I'll leave the the last word to Cam Hayward de facto through me. He said, "Hey, listen, we got the result. The rest of this stuff we can go through the film, okay? But we're walking out of here." feeling pretty good about ourselves anyway appreciate everybody watching and and checking us out we're headed to baltimore next week make sure you're watching the new double shot show at 4 p.m eastern monday through friday that chris and i do for dk pittsburgh sports